All right, hi, this is Eric Peacock, Jeremy Fitness. I just want to fill this quick little webinar together because we're approaching New Year's resolution time, and a lot of people don't have a good plan in place for being successful. It's just go and join a health club, get on a treadmill, and maybe starve myself or go on some crazy diet. And I wanted to bring some truth and some sanity to this whole process. And share one of my little presentations. I just tweaked this up. I've done this. This is a talk and a speech before. Um, but really, five ways to really look at converting your body from a fat toy to a fat burning machine. It's really easy for those of us maybe that we've gotten a little bit older, we're in our 40s or 50s, and it's easy to blame our metabolism and our age for why we put on weight, but it's really not the case. Um, the majority of the, the reason is because our lifestyles have changed, our activity level has gone down, and what we eat has changed. And that has put our body's hormone system and uh, endocrine system and overall metabolism has put a real crunch on that. But the good news is you can get it back. I've seen it happen for people of all ages. Um, but you have to be uh, willing to put some time and some effort into it. But if you work smart, you won't have to work as hard. So that's really what this is all about. Um, so really I titled this is five ways to convert your body from a fat story to a fat burning machine and get the lean fit body you've always wanted. It's really about creating a lifelong process versus, you know, this is going to be a 30 pounds in 30 days type, you know, quick fix type thing that's only going to uh, have a yo-yo on the other end of it like most of these 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 prod these programs that promise quick fixes but end up in short term results and uh, long term frustration. So, with further without further ado, I'm just going to roll forward. So, the number one reason I really really feel that America is fat it's, it's is our poor nutrition. It is terrible. Um, we have a lot of uh, processed foods now um, that are instant and quick, which makes it easier for us to eat. Uh, but when we eat these things. Uh, they spike our blood sugar, and when we spike our blood sugar, uh, over time, what happens is our body produces a lot of insulin. Insulin is a hormone that takes sugar, broken down carbohydrate, called glucose, and tries to shuttle it into the muscle cells. And that's when you have a normal operating uh, blood sugar and insulin. But over time, when we're eating on the run, eating processed foods, instant stuff we heat up in the microwave, running through drive-throughs. Skipping meals, our blood sugar becomes very unstable. It starts to look like a roller coaster. And when our blood sugar is spiking and dropping, our body, our insulin is being dumped into our system at high amounts to try to control that. And when we have that going on, that makes our body in a fat storing environment. Insulin is a storage hormone. If too much insulin, guess what it's going to do? It's going to make our body better at storage. It's an easy way to remember it. So we have to start looking at what type of carbohydrates we're eating. So it might you know, the solutions, how do we get our nutrition better? First, we've got to start eating more whole foods, not things that are, are quick and on the go. And this takes a little effort and time. It means we've got to actually shop on the weekends, prepare things for the week, uh, you know, maybe take a little extra time and have food ready, that good food ready that we can take with us to work and have ready for when we get home at dinner so we can give it to the kids. And, I'll, you know, I'm not going to lie, this is going to be a real pain in the butt. But this is where the rubber meets the road when it comes to good nutrition. And when I say whole food, let me give you an example. Uh, you know, having something that's like a, a natural wild rice that's going to take you a long time to cook versus instant, you know, minute rice. Um, you know, or, you know, having something, you know, like a, a fruit, a real fruit that gets you have cut up and versus like some fruit that's in a, in a cup with a bunch of syrupy sugar juice. Um, you know, stuff that's going to take a little longer to cook, it's going to be more towards its natural state versus being altered. You know, even things like, uh, you know, looking at oatmeal. Oatmeal is a great carbohydrate, I think, but, you know, having an old-fashioned cookie that's going to take longer to cook, um, like steel-cut oats or old-fashioned oats versus instant oats that have flavor in them. And just remember any food that have flavor, yogurt, oatmeal, cereals, a lot of times that flavor is just, you just call it refined sugar, which is going to drive your blood sugar uh, real high, which is what exactly you don't want. Um, so you really got to be careful on how you pick your carbohydrates. So the more natural the carbohydrate, the better. Um, and just be, you know, staying away from white carbs. We always call white carbs the devil. And white rice, white pasta, white potatoes typically have a higher glycemic index, meaning they're going to spike your blood sugar at a higher amount versus things that have more color. Um, you know, think of like a sweet potato versus a white potato. Think of wild rice versus white rice or even brown rice versus white rice. Uh, better choices, things that take longer to cook, are generally not going to spike your blood sugar as much. So those are what you want to make the mainstay when you're getting those kind of grainy carbohydrates um, during your shopping spree. Also, vegetables are kind of a free carb. You can eat as many of those as you want. And fruits, not not a bad choice either. Just don't want to eat a lot of them. Uh, you want to eat some of them, but you don't want to eat a lot of them later in the day. Uh, the other thing you want to do is make sure at every meal you're including protein, fiber, and some good fats. And when I say protein, I mean your protein grams should be pretty much close to or around equal to your carbohydrate grams per meal. 
a lot of times when I'm looking at a uh, food journal for someone, I see, you know, 50 grams of carbs and 6 grams of protein, when really I should see 25 and 25 would be a better thing, or maybe 30 grams of carbs and 25 grams of protein. Protein uh, will slow down the blood sugar spike. It will slow blood sugar's entry into the bloodstream. It also is thermogenic, meaning your body actually has to burn calories to break protein down. It also helps preserve precious muscle mass. Muscle mass is, you know, think about muscle mass can be anywhere from 20 to 50 uh, calories per pound. Uh, so the more muscle mass you have, the better your metabolism. And having enough protein helps you maintain that muscle mass. Fiber and good fats also helps lower the blood sugar and, and lower insulin levels, which keeps your body in a fat burning zone. So good fats being things like coconut oil, nuts, uh, almonds, uh, you know, avocados, um, olive oil, those type of good fats, those natural fats versus, you know, trans fats. Even some sat saturated fats aren't bad. Like you know, egg whole eggs, or you know, like from grass-fed beef, something like that. That's more of a natural type of curry fat versus the fat you get from like fries, which is going to be trans fat, which is toxic to the system. Um, and then fiber, uh, we don't get enough of that. Women should get about 25 grams, uh, at about 35 per day. Uh, fiber actually slows down the entrance of that uh, blood sugar into the system as well, and helps you maintain a good, healthy weight. Helps you stay in a fat burning zone. Um, and it also helps your digestive health. Uh, digestive health is really important to fat loss. I, I should mention that. If it's not coming out, it's not coming off. So make sure you're getting plenty of fiber in because a lot of times when we have issues with food, it's because we're hungry because we're not absorbing good food because we have poor digestion. And we want to make sure we're getting good digestive habits in our system. So we're getting plenty of fiber. We're even taking some probiotics and drinking a lot of water. Those things all kind of go together and keeping the gut um, working, you know, you should be going to the bathroom at least when we go at number two, at least once a day, um, because a lot of times people have a lot of bloating and backup in there too. That's a real good way to lose a few inches off the waist is to make sure that that gut, uh, that digestive tract is functioning health, healthy. Um, eating more frequently, five to six times a day. A lot of times I see people skip meals. Uh, they typically will maybe skip breakfast and maybe have lunch. I just talked to a woman today who doesn't eat till dinner time, and she said she's, you know, she's overweight. She's got a lot of weight around the midsection. So it's not just calories in, calories out. We got to spread our calories throughout the day, kind of like kindling on a fire. I always look at it, you know, if you build a fire, you're always throwing a little kindling on to keep that fire stoked, and that's what you want to do with your metabolism. So try to eat about three three meals a day with two snacks a day in between, especially that afternoon snack seems to really help control blood sugar. A lot of times where people seem to seem to get into trouble is they miss the they're working, they're working, and they skip their afternoon snack, and maybe they have lunch at noon, and by the time they get home and eat at six or six thirty, and their blood sugar has dropped because they haven't eaten anything. And they're really hungry, and they typically tend to overeat at night, which is the worst time. And that's typically the worst time if you're trying to lose fat to be eating more of your calories. So having that three o'clock, that snack at three o'clock, can be key to really keeping you from overeating later at night. Um, and then always eating breakfast. Uh, break the fast. You know, breakfast sets the tone for the day. Kind of like lighting your grill. It lights it's your igniter. And having a good breakfast, you know. So and if you're not a person that likes to eat breakfast, you know, get a good smoothie going, a protein smoothie. Throw some, you know, some good healthy fats in there. I mentioned like coconut oil. Throw some fruit in there. Throw a good protein in there. Blend it up and drink it on the way to work. But make sure you're not skipping breakfast because, once again, when your blood sugar drops too low, uh, you know, or it goes too high, it's not a good thing. If it drops too low, you're going to have those cravings. Um, and if, you're, if your body's... If you're starving yourself a lot of the your body's going to slow down its metabolism to compensate for that, and that will slow down everything, your thyroid, your leptin, all these hormones that are important for you to continue to burn fat. So make sure we're eating breakfast or drinking breakfast uh, so you're, you're firing up that metabolism for the day. Remember, you cannot outwork a bad diet. A lot of people will go into the health club, and they will try to do this on the treadmill, and they'll only end up frustrated because they're not willing to make the necessary changes in their diet. Uh, we're going to move on to the next problem. Exercise that is not stimulating metabolism. So I'm going to pick on the treadmills, the ellipticals, the wimpy kind of moderate cardio. Not that it's bad. All exercise is good. But if you are serious about burning body fat, you need to, to up your intensity of your workouts. That means both your strength and your cardio. You need to work out circuit style, full body routines. Things that are going to get your heart rate up, you're going to get that burning effect. Uh, by doing that, what you're doing is when you're training with, you know, moderate to heavy weights and you're training at a faster pace, not taking a lot of rest periods and getting that heart rate up and getting that the burn, uh, what you're going to feel is you're going to feel lactic acid. Lactic acid stimulates human growth hormone, and that's the burn, and that is going to help you burn fat. That's one of the hormones when you elevate it in your body, it helps you burn fat. That's why people try to, to pay thousands of dollars for it a month to try to look young and stay looking lean and ripped. You know, some of the movie stars will do that. Most of us can't afford that. Uh, but human growth hormone is a big player when it comes to fat loss. 
And by doing more intense exercise, like, you know, training with weights, doing circuits, uh, you know, things and doing big exercises versus machines, uh, like kettlebell swings or squats and lunges versus doing leg extensions on a machine, you're going to stimulate more uh, hormones like adrenaline, noradrenaline, testosterone. These hormones help you burn fat and keep muscle, which is what you basically want to do when you try to stay lean. And they're going to do a better job of burning calories, getting your heart rate up, and then they stimulate what's called EPOC, which is exercise post oxygen consumption. But in, in, in layman's terms, it means an afterburn effect, meaning that 14 to 36 hours after your workout, your metabolism is going to be cranked up. It's like an afterburn. You're going to burn more calories after the workout. So doing these high-intensity type workouts, and when I talk about weights, I like circuit style, full body, and then incorporating what we call HIIT training, interval style training in there. So it could be something on a treadmill where you're, you're sprinting for 30 to 60 seconds and you're just going to jog for a minute, sprinting for 30 to 60 seconds, jog for a minute. Uh, could be doing kettlebell swings hard for 30 seconds, put the kettlebell down, walk around, recover hard for 30 seconds, or something like if there's something called Tabata where you, you, you work hard, either jump roll, kettlebell swing, burpees, 20 seconds, rest 10 seconds, 20 seconds, go, 10 seconds, rest. Uh, there's all kinds of different ways to do this, but this is what you need to be doing if you want to get your fat burning hormones stimulated. So we're doing a two-pronged approach. We're controlling our fat storing hormones by getting our insulin levels down by eating better, and we're going to kind of suppress that insulin and getting those, those things down, and then we're going to crank up our fat burning hormones uh, by the right exercise. So this, this next slide shows basically kind of a graph. On the left, this really kind of shows the uh, basically like your, your exercise difference. So on the bottom, on the gray area, is going to be your treadmill workout. You're going to see like during the workout, you're going to go and you're going to get, you're going to burn some calories, you're going to elevate your metabolism a little bit during the workout, but you see how it kind of goes down at the end, afterwards, it kind of flatlines down, it, it, it goes down lower, but if you look at the red, it looks like a big fire flame, that's your high intensity workout. You see how the metabolic rate is severely higher and it stays almost higher, it doesn't drop as fast as the grip low, and that just shows high intensity weight training or cardio workout versus a typical fat burning, uh, you know, the fat burning zone or sitting on a recumbent bike, reading a newspaper, watching Judge Judy, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so it's not as effective, and that's why people, and it's, you know, frankly, those type of workouts are pretty boring. It takes a lot to stand there and do that for an hour. So kick it up your intensity will keep you more mentally engaged, but also hormonally it's going to get your body in a better position to burn body fat. Um, so that's the chart on the left. On the right is going to go back to slide one. Is it just really looking at eating carbohydrates? You know, on the, on the and when you see it says makes blood glucose, on the, and it goes, if it goes to the left, it means we're working. It's working good. We're active. We're not eating. We're not spiking our blood sugar. Our, our, our insulin is working right. But on the right, you'll see the insulin trap. This is what happens over time when we put too, produce too much insulin in the pancreas. We start to uh, shut off fat burning. We start increasing fat storage, especially around the midsection. And that's called the deadly fat, the visceral fat that can have effects and lead it into like type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease. So... Um, so those are the two areas that we really want to address when it comes to diet and exercise when it comes to getting our body in a better position to become a fat burning machine versus a fat storing machine. Um, the next slide is, not, is one we might not really think about, but poor movement quality. You know, this is one of the most frustrating things as a personal training business owner and personal trainer is getting people to pay attention to getting their movement better and really getting screened out to see what's going on with them. I mean, a lot of us have old athletic injuries or have jobs where we sit in not the best postures, and then we go and we have a bad posture, and we expect, and we have muscles that are tight and muscles that are weak, and then we go and try to run or do some kind of high intensity, maybe a boot camp class, we lift weights, and we get hurt, and we get frustrated, and we get pissed off, and we are, we're, our body's not being efficient. So creating a better body that's more flexible and more balanced in terms of, you know, flexibility and strength from side to side, is going to keep you from getting injured. It's going to make you more effective at the exercises you're doing. And here's the fat burning. This is why I tied into fat burning because when, you're, when your joints are all jacked up and you're all inflamed and you're stiff and sore, you're going to have higher levels of hormone cortisol. And cortisol is a stress hormone. And we'll get it in a fight or flight situation, but we also get it when our body's under physical stress. And when we have high levels of cortisol in our body, it acts with insulin. It actually puts our body into that fight or flight position, and it's almost like dumping sugar. It stimulates the insulin to dump in by dumping sugar into our body because it thinks we need that. It's trying to combat the stress. And cortisol, when it's at a high level in your body, higher than normal, it makes your body store fat around the middle. So it's another one of those fat, those hormones, when it's not held in check, will help you store body fat. So we want to make sure we're spending some time working on mobility, flexibility, working on postural uh, you know, alignment, um, and doing things to make sure our body's 
you know, not just we're not just beating on our body and workouts, but we're also moving with high quality. And if you're not sure if you're doing that, um, you know, we offer the FMS speed, which is the functional movement speed, which can identify movement issues you might have. You might be good, but you don't know until you get it screened out. But if you don't, if you don't live in our area, you know, find a trainer that does movement screens or a physical therapist and get a movement screen to see what kind of imbalances you might have that you're not aware of, and get a correction plan. All of our clients get a movement plan to work on becoming better, moving better, because one of the big killers of motivation with any program, one of the reasons people quit is they jack something up, they get hurt because they're not moving good, and they jump on the treadmill, they get all gung ho the first of the year, and they jack something up because their body's not efficient, not moving right. And I'll just give you one example. Like if my calves are really, really tight, which a lot of people's calves are, and I start running on the treadmill, that's going to affect how my foot strikes the ground, and that could lead to shin splints, that could lead to tendonitis in the knee. Um, that could lead to um, even hip issues, and so the people get those issues and they'll blame their knee or their their shin splints and they'll quit. Versus, you could correct that if you just work a little bit of flexibility in the calf and then also strengthening up the shin muscles. We call that tibialis anterior um, to create better balance in that lower leg. So, so don't throw this one out either. I think every good fitness program has to have strength, cardiovascular training, and and flexibility, mobility, and movement training uh, to be a really a, a complete program. Um, Problem four is hydration. A lot of people just throw this one by, forget about this one, especially in the winter months here in Minnesota, but drinking enough water helps you flush out a lot of excess water and keeps the waste products going through you, so it keeps you from getting bloated in the stomach. Um, it also keeps your liver well hydrated. Your liver works better when it's hydrated. Your liver is a big fat-burning organ. When it gets dehydrated and the kidneys get dehydrated, the liver has to kind of shift its function over to help the kidneys continue to function because they're not getting enough water. So keep a lot of water flowing through the system. It'll help your digestion. It'll help your body get rid of, like I said, excess water in the skin, which will make you feel fat and look fat. But it's not really fat. But you get, you get that. Uh, you can keep the body flushed out. Um, you keep the digestion good. You will have tighter skin. You'll have a smaller waist, and it'll, you will feel better, and your skin quality will look better. So we're all about trying to. Everybody here's got a little bit of vanity if they want to look better. So this is the cheapest product you can ever buy. It's water. You know you can. You, you know, you can get it anywhere. Uh, so, you know, take, take about half your body weight analysis and divide it by eight to get your glasses per day. I'm just going by eight ounce glasses. It's a simple formula. So if I'm a 150 pound person, I want about 75 ounces a day. Divide that by eight, that would be about nine, just a little over nine glasses per day. And always kind of use the pee test. If you're peeing clear, that's usually a good sign. If you're peeing orange, that means you're dehydrated. So don't forget about hydration and think of water as kind of like oil for the metabolism. It gets everything, keeps everything running in the, in the engine. Um, so for, uh, make sure you're drinking lots of water. This is probably one of the number one things to see that people really fall short on when I look at food journals. And it's one of the simplest things to, to really do. Um, number five is no support system accountability. Uh, you know, quit fooling yourself. I'm just going to be real blunt here. If, it, if you can't, if you aren't good at something and you keep trying to do it over and over again, think there's going to be some magic wand that's going to be raised and all of a sudden you become good at it, um, you're kidding yourself. Um, all of us need accountability and support in some way, shape, or another. You see this guy coaching. I mean, I was a football a guy, I was a football coach and a player, and we all have coaches for a reason. Coaches help us to succeed, whatever it is. I, right now, I have a coach, the business coach, and I'm not good naturally at running a business, and it's because of this business coach, I'm doing things I never would do on my own, and I'm following through on things that I probably could procrastinate on. And having somebody keep you in check is huge for your success in any endeavor. So I don't know if it's going to be a workout buddy, a trainer, um, you know, maybe a family member or a spouse, spouse, I'm just going to be honest, family member or spouse doesn't always work so good because there's just some dynamic there that it's more nagging than support. So I would I would encourage you to go out and find somebody to keep you accountable um, so that you're helping stay on track and that you're not, if you you're, you have to report in and back. It's like left to our own accord, I'm just going to be honest, most human beings will fall short. Um, and that's why, you know, like the personal training, one of the biggest reasons is when people say when they have an appointment or i gotta, I got to report into somebody, I do much better. Um, it's easy to go home and lay on the couch and eat chips, but if you have an appointment scheduled, you're not going to do that. Um, or if you have a weekly check-in. So find some method of accountability, whether it's a group or a, or a, or a trainer or a coach, some, some type of person, and you will be successful because I can give you all this information, but are you going to follow through with it? You have to be honest with yourself. I mean, a lot of people know what they should, a lot of what they should be doing, but are they doing it? And the only way to do it is to put a little skin in the game and, then, and to humble themselves and let themselves be accountable. And I'm just, like I said, I'm no different. I, I have the same. I have people in my life I'm accountable to. And I do that for a reason because I know left to my own accord in certain parts of my life, I would I would fail miserably. So that's just my number five. Um, 
So my end of this thing, hopefully this give you a few insights. Um, you can always contact me for more. But one thing we are running starting next week, uh, January 2nd, uh, you can start next week. We're doing this all-in program, and it's really a combination of things. Um, you know, we are Advocare representatives. We, we believe in Advocare's products. They're great products, but we've created a system, and Advocare's actually jumped in to have an all-in national program. Uh, so we're actually creating a 24, we give you 24 day challenge product. So it's a, it's like $200 worth of products, uh, a nutrition guide, uh, accountability coaching. I think this is what makes it work. I and mean, you can have great products, but if you just give them to somebody and say, okay, go have, go take these products, great. Um, that's not going to do it. So we have a nutrition guide. We teach you how to teach you how to, um, eat and we teach you how to, you know, shop and we give you, you know, some, we have a grocery store tour that we have in conjunction with this. Uh, so we want you eating regular food and using some products to help you fill in the gaps. But the accountability and coaching, I think, is what really makes this thing go. And it's, it's having somebody check in. We use my fitness pal app to see how you're eating and make sure you're doing things to move in the right direction. We'll also measure you before and after. Um, or if you're not in our state, you can get measured somewhere. But we want to make sure that uh, there's somebody there that's going to coach you and walk you through this process. And if you don't have a trainer, you don't have a specific workout program, we will make one for you for this 24-day all-in. We're really looking at that as a 90-day process. You know, really 21 days where you start to develop a new habit, 90 days is what it takes to cement it in. So this is just something we're offering out. We usually do it for $249. We're doing it as a New Year's special for $199. So if you don't have anybody you're working with, you want some guidance, you know, feel free to reach out, message me, or email me, and I'll give you more details. I always like to have a, a live conversation, either via phone or face-to-face, -to, -face to, to really kind of find out how we can help you out. Maybe this isn't the right program for you. But um, anyway, I hope this help seminar helps you out. Thanks for listening, and we hope you guys wish you all the best success in the new year, and have a great night.